as a leader and an economist, you've also dedicated part of your career to f financial inclusion and gender equality. So what led you down that path? When I started working in financial inclusion, I did not have a gender uh, awareness, let's say. And I started working that because as you are obviously aware, we live in a very unequal country. And in a country where the prevailing condition is informality. And for me, it was uh, the idea that financial inclusion was, as I, as I put it, the way to getting into formality but through the kitchen door, because you're not actually formal, yeah. but you start to gain access to the things that are going to break through the productivity constraints that you have if you're not formal. And that was sort of the logic. My idea of working in gender came much later when I got to the board of directors of the central bank in an extremely male dominated uh, scenario. I was the second person, the second woman to get to the board of directors. And that forced me to think about gender. And I, I, I did what an, we economists or, or statisticians would, would call um, sort of the, the back testing, because I reviewed how my life had gone. And where I did not feel a gender difference, I started finding out that my path had been entirely different of that of my peers. And in a sense, I felt compelled to the idea that it was something that I should work and that I was in a very privileged position to do so. And was that because of your personal experience or the, you know, what you, the perspective you had from that role? I think that also because of my personality, that was the case. And I found that the, the first interviews, none was entirely centered on what was I thinking about monetary policy or this or that. Most of the interviews were, were hovering around you are the second woman to get yeah. to the board. And therefore I said, if, if I'm only gonna answer that question, I have to answer it profoundly. So I read the literatures, I read the books, and I reflected upon my own experience. And I think when our, it was then that I said, it was not neutral for me to be a woman in this world. It has been different. I'm, I'm the mother of a, of a girl. And I think that that also was part of the equation in thinking. Can we say that this was your aha moment around diversity or did you have others? No, a hundred. Let's say that I had, I had had one previous moment in which I became radically aware I was a woman. I remember that I had been offered a post in the Superintendencia Financiera. I was working at the time at the Banco de la República, at, at, at the central bank as staff. And I went to my then boss, mentor, later in life, my colleague, and, and Gerardo, and I told him. And he said, I think you want to have a child now. And I think that it's best if you stay here because you're going to need some pampering to do that. And he was absolutely right. My aha moment came later because all in all, when I was seven months pregnant, I got again an offer from the financial superintendency and there, that time I accepted it. I was pregnant already, so that was done. Yeah. <laughs> and I went on to have my child in the financial superintendency and that was hard enough. But then my aha moment was when I think, thought about all those years and I said, it has been different. It has been different and it shouldn't be entirely that way. There are differences among, ev I mean, every human being has to have a, a different path but it should not be prejudiced by gender. And I think that, that definitely that moment in which I had to think about that question, what does it feel, what does it mean that you're the second woman in the board of directors of the central bank, was my moment of truth in what comes to gender and diversity. Okay. And what does diversity mean to you? I think it's the idea that we all have the right to follow our independent individual path to happiness. And that means lots of things, because it's not only gender, it's religion, it's attitude, it's personality. For me, diversity is the idea that you need to sort of say, these are the real people, these are not their imposed values, and they all should have a place in the table. Um, 
And those voices come from very different places, ideologies, religion, ethnicity, background. Um, so gender is just one of those dimensions. And I actually think that part of what I've become very adamant about is that I actually think that in the gender discussion, we are coming from one stereotype, but we're moving to a different one.